This might be multiple videos, but this is, you know, over many days or weeks that we've done that on that fourth one in a row. <laughs> so sorry if we just talk about things in the past, in, videos, in the past yeah. videos that you might have seen a month ago, or not at all, that we talked about like 48 seconds ago. Yeah. Or, yeah. So this is part three, but it's actually the second sub point under biophysical interactions yeah, because so they put it together. Yeah, dot point two of Barry Reef is biophysical interactions, and under biophysical, biophysical interactions, there's a number of sub dot points. This one is the third one, hydrological second, processes. Because second, because it's geomorphic, yeah, sorry, but hydro, we break it up. Hydrological yeah. process. So hydrologic processes is part of which biophysical sphere? Water sphere. Which is called the? Hydrosphere. Good. Um, so again, we keep breaking them up and remember, I'm like, if you can just remember the subheadings under each one, it's the rest of it will like come yeah, flooding back. Come so this one we're going to oh, break. Come, come flooding back. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to break this into three parts. We're going to break it into waves, mm -hmm. currents and tides. Yes. They're the three things. Three main ways that water impacts on the reef. This one's pretty quick, actually. I think this will be a quick video, um, but we'll get through them. Um, we want to start with currents. So currents, when we look at currents, there's two main ones that we look at, which is the trade wind current mm -hmm. and the East Australian current. Does that second one sound familiar to I you? I feel like I've seen it in a movie where they one fish tries to find another fish. Yeah. So the East Australian current is actually from Finding Nemo. So That's the one. It's not, okay, Finding Nemo is not like an accurate accurate depiction. Are you saying that Finding Nemo is not a documentary? No. Um, I am not saying that because okay. it is, clearly. Okay. But it's, okay, but it does exist. <laughs> oh my god. You're saying sharks can't talk and I'm named Bruce. So East Australian Current is not depicted um, scientifically in Finding Nemo, but it, it is, it does exist is, and it does thing that move exists, yes. sediment and zooplankton, which we're going to look at, which is mm. an important suit. So, Important source of food and energy. Good. Use your words. Use your words. Um, and it does it does move those things around, so that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a number of ways that currents actually affect coral reefs. So the first one is that it moves sediment around. So sediment, which is a little bits of our limestone rock that's been broken off of coral, um, gets moved through these currents. And when it gets moved, it can actually cause different islands to form. Because remember, a Great Barrier Reef is not just one big reef; it's actually a series of over 2,900 different reefs and a lot of different islands. Yeah. I thought you were going to yeah. jump in. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I disagree. Yeah, it also brings zooplankton to, to the reef mm -hmm. that is used um, as an important part of the Great Barrier Reef food web. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it also is important for migration. Um, so a lot of animals, and if you think back to finding Nemo, yeah, the turtles, with the turtles you they're use, right, they're right, so. they, they use those currents um, to move throughout the reef, yeah. um, and they use that for breeding. Yeah, um, it also can have an impact on the temperature of the ocean as well, because it can move, like, you have a, a cooler section of water and a warmer section of water, and you have warm currents and cool currents. So if you have an influx of warm water from a, from a current, um, you can get like bleaching events and stuff like that or, or the exact opposite like sometimes there's been a bleaching event but then a cooler current comes through and it actually is a big help to the reef recovery from, from that. Excellent so that's number one currents um, and if we want to break that down it moves zooplankton which is important for our food webs it moves sediment which is important for forming um, new reefs and islands um, and it also is important for migration and for breeding of species in the Great Barrier Reef and yes. Temperature. So yeah, so coral breeding without going right into the, the coral breeding cycle, but um, basically one day a year, um, there's a big spawning event and the um, coral basically just spew out their gametes, their reproductive cells into the water, which all mix around, and current and then um, new coral, new polyps go and find a new bit of rock or a new bit of surface of the ocean to or sea floor to, to get a, um, start a new coral colony or start a new building a new reef. Um, and the tides, uh, sorry, the currents have a, uh, a big impact on where those um, new corals can, can grow. Because if they stay in the same spot, that wouldn't be very good because there's already coral there and we can't find a spot to. Yeah, so if we think about it, like currents are really important for actually the Great Barrier Reef to expand. Yes. And the, the Great Barrier Reef has expanded to the extent that it's expanded because of the way the currents are able to. Um, Spread the reproductive cells. Of coral. Yeah, after coral spawning. And we'll talk about coral spawning in our next um, video, which is about biogeographical factors.
Very so good. we'll get into more detail there. Mm. Um, so the second one is tides. Uh, tides. Are you tides? Yeah, sure. Um, so tides actually have a, a lot of um, a lot of the same impacts as as we just described for for currents. Um, one of the main things about tides are they are a daily occurrence rather than a constant, like they're in for half the time, out for half the time, and where um, uh, largely the currents move so north and south up the up and down the coastline. Tides are often moving in and out, so they're, they're doing essentially the, the, the opposite, if you like, instead of this way, they're going that way. Um, so they're still moving all of that sediment around. Um, they're still, they don't have as much of an impact on uh, ocean temperatures, like they're not bringing cool water in from a, a different location, um, but they're certainly having a big erosional impact um, uh, and a weathering impact on the coral. Uh, and they're also uh, moving sediment and have a, a, a role in moving Baby coral around. If you want to see this, this would be, you'd have to do a bit of um, scrolling. But if you go to our Instagram, we made a video about the mud flats at mm. Food Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. Um, and it's insane in Cairns if you walk through the difference um, in the morning to afternoon, high tide and low tide is insane. So at, when tide um, goes out during low tide, there's this huge mud flat that becomes. It's almost as far. I mean, it's it's. Kilometers. It's kilometers. Yeah, yeah it's like you, you can't quite see where the ocean is. Like it goes that far out. It, it's really hard to believe that that um, tides can go in and out that far. It, yeah. It's crazy. It's certainly a lot more than I've ever been used to around where I've lived in Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. So go back and watch that. I'll yes. Understand. Yeah. Very good. And it's, it's another thing too, because um, there's like the seabirds and crabs and a whole bunch of stuff that live and, and feed off that mud flats. Um, important thing to keep in mind when we do the barrier reef is it's not all just the coral under the water. It's the islands and the island birds and stuff like that. It's all part of the, the big system. So um, if you can talk about the the, um, the tidal action on you know, bird populations and stuff like that and how it's feeding ground for these birds, seabirds. Um, and that's all, that's part of the barrier reef because they are part of the system too. Excellent. Um, the last one is wave action. Now, if you've watched our last video about geomorphic processes, you kind of already know this and we won't go into too much, but we know that um, waves have a mechanical weathering effect on the Great Barrier Reef. So if we have large waves, it's going to break off bits of coral, which will smash into other bits of coral, um, and that's going to, to cause erosion. In our last video, I explained what, uh, under what circumstances you get large waves too. You get large waves and cyclones and stuff like that. About fetch and all that sort of stuff, so go back and watch that if you haven't yet. Yep, the other thing, um, there's tiny air bubbles in our waves as well, mm -hmm. um, and that's really important for the coral to be able to grow. Yeah, and that's used in that, water and stuff yeah, like that. in that process. But the main thing to remember there is the mechanical weathering. Make it easy for yourself, right? Like if you can use mechanical weathering in hydrologic as well as geomorphic, like you use it in both ones, and then you've just got to remember that one example. Definitely. Cool. Well, um, that's, that's about it for hydrology. As you said, it's a pretty quick one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, not too not too detailed, and it, in in that way, it's sort of easy to remember. If you remember those three main um, factors about hydrological tides, currents, waves, yeah, be good. Excellent. Okay, cool, guys. We'll be back for part four, which is biogeographical. Yes.